Hello and welcome to Dissonant Waves episode 94. Holy shit. Um, I am Trix and I am here with Ritz and Domino. Oh. Uh-huh. Hi. And today we are going to be talking about three albums. We're going to be talking about uh, Manticore by Shovels and Rope, uh, Something by the Moving Stills, and Something by Years and Years. Uh, Night Call by Years and Years, Michael. and Sunshine Corner by Moving Stills. Yes. <laughs> she totally remembered the names uh yeah that should say that should give a hint is all i'm gonna say oh god uh well you you definitely have a lot of uh expectations for me to have a certain a type of review to a certain album yeah and you, you've you've spent probably the past more than a week because you were hyping it up earlier about how much I'm going to hate this album. Yeah. And do you do you just want me to to give my review straight away? Let's yeah. Let, let, let's let's oh, let's, man- let's start let's, off with Manicore. But so before we do any of this, you want to hear hear my review tricks? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's that's better than I expected from you. You expected me to hate this record, and I I I'm I'm not into country. I full on say I'm not into country. Mm-hmm. But eh, it's kind of just indie rock. Got a lot of the start here. When it does get into the country, yeah, it bores me. But I don't think it shits me to tears. I yeah, know it's a favorite line. Dominic was saying that one just for you. Uh, <laughs> like like a lot of these other ones have. It's just kind of there. I mean, it was a good start actually. I kind of like the opener. I do too. Domino. Domino. Yeah, not just because of Domino. But yeah, it was fine. It's, it's not really much to hate about this record. Not much that I love about this record, but it's not much to hate. I think it's a sonically sound record. Maybe it's not as probably. Ta- I, I'll say talented, but I'm, I enjoy these records the same as maybe a Shaky Graves record. Maybe there's a bit more like, clever songwritings in, in those, but in the end. I feel probably around the same for all of them. Interesting. Fair. It's a fine record. That's about it. So, Trix is expecting yeah. me to, to full on just dunk yeah, on I, it. I was expecting you to like just fully dunk on it, if I'm going to be fully honest. Yeah. Uh, just just because of uh, how you've been receptive to country in the past. Oh, but, I, I, uh, I, I get where you're coming at. I'm kind of bored with this record. Don't get me wrong about that, but it doesn't mean I hate it. So, my thoughts then on. Manticore. Yes. Domino's great. The rest of it's boring shit. <laughs> I disagree, if I'm going to be honest. I actually just really like the, like this record. There's some a lot of, of fun going on with it. Sure. Some of it's some of interesting points. Um, you know, like, the show isn't too bad. I do like the beginning of Collateral Damage. You know, when you get to, like, maybe, like, the end of it, there's a little bit more interesting stuff, like Anchor... But, like, a lot of this album is just me, like, uh huh, yeah, uh huh, sure. Yeah, this is what I was That's afraid the of. Was that was the greatest fucking techno song you ever re- wrote there, Dominic. Uh huh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna uh-huh. hazard a guess yeah. that this episode might as well just be called the Uh huh, sure episode. Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. There's our episode. You, you, better, you better sample that, Ritz. Uh, look, that's that's probably already a Carly Minogue song, which cause that's going to be uh, that's going to be brought up later. Uh, yeah, I just but, was was aggressively yeah, no, underwhelmed by a lot of it. Well, fair enough. As someone who likes Shaking Graves quite a bit, you know, I agree more with the Ritz on this one. Surprisingly, uh, I think I'm going to just talk about highlights because I'm the only one who liked this album. I think really like this album. I should say, um, I think No Man's Land is a highlight. Um, I, I didn't mind. I didn't mind that one mostly because I thought the um, the weakest point I would say of this album was the song right after it, "The Night Conqueror," which I'll yeah. give you that. Th- this this album works better when it's shorter. Yes, the ideas yeah. the ideas that it brings in its instrumentation aren't interesting enough or calming or cool enough to be repeated as much as they are so 
And when the songs go on for longer, they just they just drag. And that's why Domino's a, a good opener here, because that doesn't fucking drag. It is the shortest song on this record, and that's usually when I say the shortest song um, is the best on the record, that's a bit of an insult, but in this case, it's actually not. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a case of that's just... It, it, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Like... And the other other song in here, which is a lot of kinda, good focus. Uh, another song on here, which kind of just was over overdone or overstayed its welcome, was "Happy Birthday Who." I'll give you that. Yeah, that one's very like it, it's very slow paced. Yeah, and I know a lot of slow, very minimalistic songs don't always have to go for a um go for a minute. There were some very nice acoustic songs like go for quite a while some you know, sometimes they go for minutes on end but sometimes 45 minutes you should yeah i mean yeah we're bringing the microphones but I, <laughs> I mean i know i know you two weren't so probably uh, big on brainos tato's amigo but that's pretty much pretty much just an acoustic guitar and the vocalist i can safely say that yeah is better than this Ah, uh, yeah, but but the the point the point being is that with that whole seven minutes, it's kind of telling the story. You do get you do get instruments like kind of change a bit during that seven minutes as well. But it's 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 telling a story for seven minutes. Whilst in Happy Birthday, who it's just kind of the same thing for four minutes and forty seconds. Like it could have could have easily have been a minute and a half, and it would have been yeah. the same outcome. Like the whole thing with this album is engaging. <laughs> And for me, like beyond Domino, I'm just not engaged. And so it's like on a record like oh, yeah. Los Tardes Amigos, I'm more willing to do a song like that because it's like, okay, they're doing something else that's unique, that's interesting, it's something else on the mm. record. With this, uh, a song like No Man's Land is just like, oh, it's a war song. They're doing that now. Okay. There was a um fuck, I forgot what the what the album was called. Uh, but it was a sea shanties um kind of record that was mostly just him and the acoustic guitar. Okay, I do remember what it is. It's called um Penguin Eggs by Nick Jones. Which yeah. uh that one is also very kind of like minimalistic. It's mostly just him singing air over his guitar, not much more instrumentations. And in those cases the songs will go longer and stuff like that. But I noticed uh, kind of like a big comparison doing to something like on here i don't know not every song is minimalistic on this uh, on this record i'm just going and comparing the weak points on this record i mean I, uh, it's worth pointing out my favorite, the, yeah, yeah i get that my favorite live album is live at jittery joe's which is just jeff mangum and an acoustic guitar yeah yeah that that album kicks so much ass though but uh just just bringing back into my point with like the nick jones record which i actually i really like that record it just like not really going back to it personally there is a a lot of storytelling and there's a lot of reason to keep interest in all of the songs whilst at the at this album's weak points you're just listening to it for kind of no reason yeah and when this when this album does have highlights it's not fucking grand it's not like fuck yeah i need to listen to that <laughs> kind of shit it's it's interesting i i feel like i'm going to commit sudoku on myself here by comparing it to Big Scary at times to the instrumentations, <laughs> but I felt like the, I I did feel like the piano usage at times did have a little bit of a comparison there. Oh, was, I, I can scary, I can see that Big Scary is so much better with the piano usage. Oh, oh yeah. don't get me wrong about that. That's why I made the commit Sudoku joke. Sure, but yeah. comparing duo, but still, oh the, right, yeah, but still there there are glimpses of. Good instrumentation on here. I like I said, I pretty much ended up enjoying this the same as much as Shaky Graves, which I don't like I don't hate the Shaky Graves records. I am just not interested in them. And that's kind Fair of what enough. it is is with Manticore. And so I... It's, I, I I'll just quickly finish here, Dominic, but I'll get back to you. And so it just comes into the case. It's like it's a genre which well Whilst this album doesn't really stay in country, which I like, and I mean, my favorite Shaky Graves record was the one that was a lot more indie rock as well. Yeah. No, it, it's it's showing that just in my in my perception of it, country is still a genre that's kind of just like not done anything in a while, and people do try to put their own twist on it, and 
apparently, apparently the new Orville Peck record's supposed to be really good. Maybe, I, I've heard maybe, good things about that too. May, maybe that would be a country record I like, but I didn't like the previous Orville Peck stuff or stuff, so I haven't gone uh, bothered listening to it. Uh, along that same line, at some point we have to cover the drive-by truckers. Mm. I've thought about doing them. Thought about it. Uh, I'm not alone. Before yeah, but... before you go on, uh, Chicks, Dominic was uh, yeah. Um, going... for it. Fuck, I kind of forgot it. But like going back on your point about um, I like shaky grapes, and I feel like I'm now in your like I'm now seeing it through your eyes, Ritz, of like how you feel during a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Except I think I'm a little bit more of that. I have more of that anger that Tricks is looking for, because I thought this was just so aggressively not. Shaky Graves, like whatever Shaky. Graves, That's fair enough. Whatever Shaky Graves is doing, I just really like. You know, I really like the country stuff. You know, I think his storytelling mm-hmm. is really good. And he pulls oh, you in yes. with really interesting, unique interpretation, guitar skills, all that stuff. I don't really find. I I have been trying to. I, I have been trying to learn some Shaky Graves stuff, and I I do not I do not have the dexterity for it. Yeah, and like you know the whole busker thing too is cool, but then like you get the second half of Roll the Bones X with the. Whole our thing and i was super into that oh yeah I thought that was really that, that old. yeah that that whole saga of the the haunted guitar i i think about that at least uh, pretty much every day i think about it at least once a week if not more but and um there there's there's nothing like that on this album and i can totally get where you're coming from but it's also at the same time just good noise to me I mean, I guess the, 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 this isn't meant to be that. This is never, you know, this is a, this is a personal, you know, album dealing with, like, being in a house together. It's a quarantine record. It's a parent yeah. and all that stuff. And none of that is there for me. None of this is my speed, I guess. This is the, the regular country that I'm not into. That, that's fair enough. I, I can totally get where you're coming from. And they're on the same label. They're, they're, they're very similar in ways. I just... I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it personally. S- similar, but yet different. Yeah, like shaking girls. And that's what a lo- that's what a lot of country is, and I like like to go off on the side because I I, re- I recently fairly learned that I really love country music, mm-hmm. and um, it really comes down you, you, to. I just want to say quickly, you said that like you were discovering a sexuality. <laughs> well, Mom, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm I, gonna be honest, my I like father instilled it. My father instilled a uh, hatred of the banjo and uh, country music in general in me when I was a kid. But uh, as I moved out of the house and listened to music on my own, I really discovered that I love the banjo and I love country music. You inevitably like whatever your parents hate. Yeah. I mean, but like, I, I got into tism from my dad. That's all I can say. Like, I, I, I joke that I didn't start getting into scare your parents music until I, until I started listening to doom metal and country music. Because uh, my mom got gets me for like the punk kind of stuff that I enjoy. My uh, father gets me for all the other kind of stuff I enjoy, like the indie stuff. And uh, but no, but neither of them get why I like doom metal or country music. It's kind of funny. He's on the appreciation for Sue genres, uh, music appreciation. Yeah, uh, there is one thing I wanted to talk. A couple things I wanted to talk about this album that yeah. uh, I kept trying to interject, but Ritz kept steamrolling on. But uh, I just have there, my uh, that's it's all right, man. But uh, I really like the focus on vocal harmonies in this album. Yeah, they there is a there. Yeah, there's a lot of very pretty vocal harmonies, especially in like the more like slower and soulful songs, like uh, "No Man's Land" and um, what was the other one? Hold up, uh, "Collateral Damage." Mm-hmm. Well, collateral damage. Uh, is Nick. Also... Go ahead. I was going to say, Nick really likes collateral damage. Well, it's also the song where they don't do the vocal harmonies at first, so that part stands out to you. Yeah. It's just uh, Carrie and her singing by herself for the beginning of it. Yes. So that part, I did, you know, that part does intrigue me. That part is interesting for that bit of it where it's just her, and then it's like, oh, you know, they're back to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I I'll, I'll, I'll quickly say just about, like, their kind of, not just in their harmonies, but actually in their vocal performances as well. They they obviously have kind of like strong country accent. I don't I say country yeah. accent is kind of a stereotype for how yeah. country music sounds here. Yeah. The, su- the southern drawl. Yeah, I I come out of it very just like uncaring. Like I I have no thought to hate or like it, which is 
usually as I kind of really hate that kind of vocal performance, I think it's probably a compliment to how they're doing it. But mm-hmm. when it comes to in general music, it's still just kind of music, like a vocal performance that's there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, for me, I just think that the the woman Carrie and her, she's the better singer. And I, I, I get that. Yeah. I just keep focusing <laughs> on that because she seems to be doing a lot more than Michael Trent does. Yeah. And they're married, so they're yeah, they're a couple, so they they just do yeah. this because that's their life. But like, yeah, uh, I just want power to that. I mean, Michael Trent was in the the films in the two thousands. He was in bands before this. He was, you know, yeah trying to do more and I, she had some solo stuff before this i was looking into but i think she's like the she's the the true breakout here versus yeah i, I get that i was like it's cool that they're like doing this together and everything i kind of just want to see more yeah. of her solos this is this is a band that i have to do i have to listen to more of what they put out because like i i'm intrigued by this album but like i feel like there's more in their older stuff if that makes any sense at all well, yeah, this was supposed to be like a really stripped down record I was reading, but then COVID happened, so they're like, "Ah, oh, let's just do some more with it." Yeah, but I think that kind of showed like there's a difference there. It's like I think Domino was maybe like more, maybe more of like their old stuff. Maybe Domino definitely has more of like a '50s kind of like doo wop vibe to it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like it, it's less country music and focuses more on like just like a more vintage styling, which I I I, I enjoy that. I like that and, um, quite a bit. Yeah. So th- there's there's stuff to like about this album, but there's definitely a lot of stuff to dislike about it. That being said, it's still probably my favorite this week. Rising to me. That pig. Okay. We're all <laughs> just going to like our own picks, and that's going to be it. <laughs> oh, pretty much. Pretty pretty much. Well, uh, in waves, everybody. Which one do we, uh, which one do we want to move on to next after we do our favorites and nice favorites? I, I don't care. I think we're all going to have the same results. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Well, my favorite is uh, Domino, least favorite, uh, Divide and Conquer. Same here. Domino's favorite, Divide and Conquer, least favorite. And, and I'll add on No Man's Land for my favorite. Uh, same least favorite? Yeah. yeah Interestingly, cool. they consider this a heavy metal album for them. <laughs> that's... That's probably the best part about this record, to be honest. Not literally, but in there, like in the emotional part. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah right. I, I get that, but I don't. But hey, just, just, just the idea that the, they consider this heavy metal is kind of funny to me. We also, all right, well, like... yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say what we do next, and we'll do it on my pick, which I'm going to uh, piss both of you off by calling this Australian Petite League. Uh, nowhere near no. as good as Petite League. Yeah. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere near as good as Petite League. Is this how? Wow, that, that, that really pissed you two off. This it's is not why yeah. I picked it. It's not why I picked it. Listening to this album, listening to this album is like drinking water. Yeah, it's. I I want to disagree. I think I think there are some good moments, but yeah, you're right when it. But it feels like you're drinking water. It's um, it's it's doing fucking nothing. I have heard so many better versions yeah. of this album. Like this is the other side of the complaint I have about like, uh, like, like the whole fan club wallet beach money indie scene thing. For so many of those bands. Sorry, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll go on just. Before, I'm explaining uh, it poorly, but like. Yeah, uh, before you criticize, I'm yeah. just, I'm just going to explain why I did, I did pick this. So. Yeah. Uh, this was actually, I, I I have known of the Moving Stills kind of barely for a little. I've had them in Spotify playlists just out of random. But it's kind of like, hey, would you like to discover this song? Like, yeah. Um, during the last Bandcamp Friday, I actually asked um, someone on Neil's Music Discord, hey, uh, what should I buy? Because you're usually pretty good at knowing what's on. And um, had two people who were pretty hyped about this Moving Stills record. Uh, mm-hmm. And they both were saying, like, pick it up. So I picked it up, and I'm, I need an excuse to properly listen to this. And I'm like, hey, let's pick it to the 2022. I don't think this record's bad. Don't think it's great. It's not going to be one of those records where I, I, I'm, I'm talking about it at the end of the year. Yeah. I'm probably only going to have the opener in my playlist, to be honest, but I do think that opener is pretty good. I did... I did joke about the saying Australian Petite League here. There is definitely that surf pop kind of lo-fi, which is similar. Yeah. 
But if I do be honest, this does sound close to the pinkest blue. Also, Lorenzo just has personality. Yeah. This, this album has no personality. I I disagree Throw with me a the line no personality. Is the we get. Yeah. Yeah. I disagree with the no personality. I don't I don't I'm not going to compare this uh like to Petite League anymore outside of the jokes that I did. An extension so like complete asshole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, no, go go ahead and finish your point. So like there's like a stereotype of how like female fronted or like femme presenting people or however you want to phrase that bands where you know they have like a very specific sounding sound uh, fourth wanders fan club wallet even adult mom yeah, yeah. a lot of that stuff plush i think this is like the male masculine version of that that is a very accurate comparison this is just I, that sound but like yeah the reason why i disagree is because this is just brisbane indie rock it's this isn't like a whole but it doesn't matter. Like, I, 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 I get your point. I, I, I get your point. I get oh, the whole sound here, but I don't think this is some kind of like, oh, we're trying to be like kind of um, alternative or something here in the sound. I think this is just what a lot of the scene sounds like there, and that's why it is. And I don't think it sounds like a fan club roll up here, kind of, or um, whatever the other ones that you said was. I kind of, you kind mean- of already forgot. Fan Club Wallet, Fourth Wanders. Fourth Wanders. Like a, a Sir, Chloe, Sir Chloe. I like. I can't that. remember at all how Sir Chloe sounds, but with Fourth Me Wanderers, I think, I think, I think Fourth Wanderers is a completely different style of sound, and I think Fan Club Wallet is a completely different sound, uh, style it, of sound. It, it is a different style of sound, but I, I, kind I, of compare. compare I, 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 I do get like the aspects kind of of what you're getting at. It, mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not fully, I'm not fully, di- I, I'm not fully disagreeing here. This isn't a record I'm gonna like defend, uh, die on a hill for. I think, I think there were better moments that are um than probably being accounted for here. I do think they're wrong in the first half. I think this is probably a better EP than it is an album. Yeah. Uh like if you told me this was gonna be Arlie's debut record, I'd be like, damn, they kind of stepped down a little bit. But I mm. can see, still see it as mm. an Arlie record either. <laughs> yeah. I mean. It's real. It's it's just really just kind of Australian underground indie. I mean, it's not that interesting, I guess. That's just really what it is. I, I, like even in the, even in that scene, there's like better versions of this. Oh yeah, I'm not fucking disagreeing with that. I'm really? just I'm giving I'm giving a little bit of defense this time because I like it a bit more mm-hmm. than you do like, do in here. Like they're from McMaster's Beach. They're very surfy. Right. They're very beachy. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. I can understand like this is surf music for them and then that's just that's mm-hmm. what they're used to, that's what they're into. That's fine. To me And I I, I do think there are catchy moments on this record as well and I, I do also think that those same moments are pretty fucking cheesy. I I wish I could tell you more about the songs. I have a couple things I remember, but it's like I remember Gene, I was interested to see if it was like some kind of a queer thing because Gene is like the masculine spelling and they keep talking about like boyfriend stuff and it's like, nah, not going in there. Yeah. But stuff like that, just kind of the curiosity is as I'm trying to listen to this and glean something from it because it's just that sound to me again. And I know there's different styles, there's completely different things and that there's different qualities within that. And that's just like saying that Home is Where and Glass Peach are the, are the same in some ways. I know, but I think this is that that just becomes a um a comparison out of nowhere. Sure, I, mean, I guess I'm just saying like to me they more, they sound alike even though I acknowledge their differences of like fan club wallets and the fourth wanderers and you, like you can make the comparisons even to like Beach Bunny even though I do like Beach Bunny and Sir Chloe and all that a bit better. That's I funny. um nah, I, I just I, it's hard to explain why I, I I disagree with that other than I just don't see that that kind of as big of a similarity in the sound as you do. I mean, yeah, when it comes to a lot of, even the Australian surf that we've done here, obviously when it comes to Australian surf here, I'm always a um a, a big fan of shoving down Hockey Dad. Hockey Dad's much yeah. better. Yeah. Right. I, I, I would rather that. listen to Hockey Dad a thousand times more than this. Yeah, but that's also because for me, I do listen to Hockey Dad a thousand times. But, uh, and there are... No, like even in the northern New South Wales, Byron area where you get a lot of surf pop, there are a lot more that 
are more popular they're doing it a lot better like one of the big ones at the moment is bay rainbow which is a kind of a sort of big they're a bit surfy but psychedelic as well yeah and <laughs> i know we're not really talking about the songs themselves i mean you are right there is a lot forgettable on here i do think you and me is still a good opener even if it's not a fantastic opener i do like that it starts off a bit more post-punky compared to that kind of thought. i know i know post-punk and surf can sound very similar at times but I do think yeah it tries to go a bit more on the border of post-punk for a bit and i i'm a little disappointed the rest of the album didn't try to to kind of toe that line so oh, i'm a I have a question. Uh, it's kind of unrelated, but kind of is related. Did Stick yeah, Figures no. get dropped from a major label? Uh, I don't know. Probably because they're not, they're not, the not exactly still not exactly still good in the uh, public eye. Right. So I'm just because it's like Sticky Fingers is on the same label as this band. Uh, maybe. Sure, shake. Um, I looked into it. Yeah. Uh, it's they all they all have Tumblr pages. It's all it's all on Tumblr for some reason, but. I was just well, intrigued by the fact that Sticky Fingers is on this indie label with this kind of a band, and I think even them, the Sticky Fingers has so much more personality happening. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to, to disagree there, because I still have the controversial opinion of, uh, of liking Sticky Fingers songs, although I haven't been, haven't been so keen on their shit post-breakup. Uh, but it's kind of like, yeah, I I don't know. It's hard. It's it, it's hard. I know we're just kind of going into circles around the whole same thing here, and it's just me saying like I agree and, and disagree at the same time here. Like I think band that's influenced by the Smiths and the Cure. Oh my god! Wow. Oh I, my I, god. Would I? I haven't seen the interviews to know if they actually have been on am Not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to this and say this is a um a Smiths inspired record though. There was one Cure song. Not right? really. The, which which song? Uh, let me, I have to look for it. Hold on. I have notes on one of them. Well, while you while you look for that, I'm gonna just say that I, I made a joke about listing just other bands I'd rather listen to than um than this record because I just list I, them, you coward. Um. Hello. For uh, over this album, it's just more character. This album is just incredibly I've... boring. I think I in, in the end, whilst I think Hot Flush Heatwave has a like really stronger tight. song can, with can them. So, um, I would say in the end, just to do a comparison, whilst I do think Hot Flush Heatwave's album had a stronger song, I would probably put them around the same as in, in as in I, German. I, I'm more, I, I'm more comparing Hot Flush Heatwave to. Um, uh, for, for their first album, rather than the last album we did with them, uh, their um, Neapolitan. Okay. Fuck, I don't know. I, I actually don't know that one. I think I prefer Neapolitan to um to the new one. I don't know. The, what uh, I the song "Come In" is what I was thinking of. That sounds like a Cure song. Gotcha. More synthy, for sure. And I'd also even like to just stay staying in like the Australian indie scene. Uh, there's a band called Foreign National, which does this sound so much better. Which I still haven't listened to Foreign National. You, you did discuss I, you, them a long time ago. I, I, I might just po paste one of their songs in the chat just to show you what I'm what the idea I've got in terms of like better sound of this. But um, it, yeah, there, I've just heard this album a hundred times, and like I'd rather listen. There's yeah. like the high steps I'd rather listen to. I'd even like re rather listen to like the frights or the growlers than this album. Although I think this. Uh... This artist is probably less controversial than them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What well, controversy? Oh, I would not be surprised actually if there's uh, never any controversy with this record. I mean, this album, oh, this album, sorry, this album bad, took bad, like sorry. a while to come out with. They like they've been releasing singles for like four or five years. Oh yeah, no, no um, I think I discovered them originally when they put out like nineteen or something as a as a single. Yeah, I mean. I probably enjoyed this. Like it, it's you. You are right. We are. Um, we are probably picking each other's. Like uh, each uh, each of our own as a number one this week. And I'm not saying that because I really like this album. I think this is probably one of the uh, the most mid weeks that we've ever had. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's been. Like this album isn't bad. I know you two aren't enjoying it, but it's not bad. No, none like, of them are bad. Yeah. No. This isn't like the Alex Cameron Alice Glass week. Yeah. 
Although I I would almost say I'd probably enjoy Alex Cameron a little more than the stuff this week. I disagree hmm. there, but you know, that's, 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 yeah. just, that's just that's just a personal taste in here, but I I, I, you couldn't, you couldn't stick a gun to my head and force me to rank him in a minute. Yeah. I mean. Oh well. Uh, we all had fun. Did you, did you have some? We all had fun listening to our stuff. Our stuff. Yeah. Sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I'm still, I'm still trying to think what the fuck I picked for next week because uh, I did pick up sixteen fucking records uh over the past two days at record store day. Nice. I. I would like to mention that this is probably a blender for me, and I feel like it's a more justified blender for me. Uh, I, I, think this is, I think this is the most justified blender you have had, yes. I, I have listened to this album like four times over the week, and I could not tell you a definitive song title off of it. I remember Big Thief more than this. Oh, but Big Thief's way fucking better than everything this week, so... Yeah. I, don't, I disagree there as well, but that's me. Yeah, but that's just you going gay for years and years. Which oh, we'll no, get we'll to right now for this. Yes. Uh, favorites for me, you and me, from me line, fine. Least favorite, uh, probably anything got the second half. Yeah, it line. exists. Throw me a line's my favorite, I guess, because it was the most interesting. I was reading that that's mostly a just a demo track with some, I mm. think, some additional stuff on it, but I mm. don't know what else to say is my least favorite. The rest of it kind of runs together. And I already talked about the Blender. I already used Blender Week as a title. Yeah. What are we calling this week again? What did you say it was? Juice um, Week. I said something like, uh, what, what did I say? I, I already forget. I can always listen back and we'll figure it out then. Yeah. But whatever that is, it's probably the title. Because this is a midweek, as you said. Yeah. But, but I had fun with years and years. This uh, album went on for years and years. Yep. Granted, it is the deluxe edition. So, like, the last five, six tracks, not really meant to be there. But uh, I, I think, you, I think you could have cut this thing in half and it would have been too big. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, it exists as a record. I don't. I probably enjoy it just a little more than Shovels and Rope. But. I mean, you could probably ask me again tomorrow, and I'd probably tell you the other way. It's uh, it's it's just the same shit. I think it, 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 go ahead. I was just gonna say it really does just feel like a lot of the same song. I disagree. I think a lot of these songs are bangers. I like a lot of them. I think they're all pretty distinct and interesting. I mean, granted, they are pop songs, so it's like, yeah, there's gonna be some repetition. But I prefer this even over like Choice of On. Uh, I'm just gonna say this, and if I get eventually cancelled for saying this shit, it's just um, it's just how <laughs> it's gonna go. Because I, I I I just have to say this, Dominic, you can stop being gay for five fucking seconds just so you you can not bring <laughs> up albums like this on the record. Because the only reason to like this album is because you went to a nightclub with a boy that you had a crush on. <laughs> when do I have time to go to nightclubs? I'm busy working. I just like this. You fantasized about going to a nightclub once you put on Spotify Discover Weekly. Okay, you don't need to dig that deep into my personal. <laughs> I'm mad. I, I researched this album, man. I mean, I think Consequences is a great opener. Starstruck is a fun track. I love the Kylie and Minogue remix of it. They really blend their voices well together. They go like surprisingly smoothly. I think I would have liked this album in high school. I would have I would have suddenly become homophobic if you could play this to me in high school. I just like um go ahead. I I got stuff to say after you go. I mean is it because I'm gay and I just relate to a lot of this stuff, even though I don't exactly live the nightclub life? Maybe. I do feel like... I, like I didn't even personal. listen to the lyrics. I didn't even listen to the lyrics on this fucking thing. I just, I just knew by the beat. And it, I'll, 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 I'll say that there was actually quite a bunch of good, good music out there which has been predominantly used in the, um, in the gay community or is, is seen as kind of like a gay, gay album. Like, yeah. Cub, Cub Sport has put out some good records on there. Scissor Sisters have put out some great records as well. Uh, the big reason why they've been better 
as well is that they're also like really really fucking gay mm -hmm. and i know it's a weird it's a weird thing i'm not trying to say um say gay is like an insult or a record or anything i'm trying to use it to describe what an atmosphere of a record is i mean even cub sport has actually gone out um and said about one of their songs when it got voted in a hottest 100 they said thank you for voting for the gayest song we ever wrote <laughs> and it, it's it's an atmosphere that goes in and when it really just does it and just has no holds bounds, it's so fucking actually great. I mean, that's why I like um, Montero from the Little Nas X album. Oh, yeah. Because holy fuck. Yeah, it's really fucking gay. That's practically how you describe the song. What's but it's so good because it's no holds back on here. And in the years and years, it just feels like another one that's lost in the landscape that just kind of has held back a bit. It's held back there. Yeah. It, I don't know, it just, it feels like another club, like, clubby, bassy fucking pop album that's doesn't really stand out in a whole crowd of them. I, I don't know if this is going to sound homophobic, but the uh, the cover art for this album really makes me uncomfortable. Is there... uh, cover art. I actually don't mind the cover art. Like, it's not the best cover art in the it... world, but it's like, I don't know, it's like, I, oh, man. Prefer, well, I prefer looking at the cover art than I do the Spotify bio picture. I don't even know what uh, it looks like right now. Uh, never mind, there's a picture of him with a snake around his neck on the um on his Spotify. That one's that one's doing something for me. <laughs> <laughs> I I I guess I, I think I would have liked this album more in high school. Like uh there are worse producers that worked on this that I did listen to a lot in high school, like Galantis comes to mind. Like mm -hmm. I, I recognize them them just because like I listened to a shit ton of them in high school. But um yeah, nowadays this this just ain't it for me, Chief. Fascinating. I'm truly fascinated. But like, I don't know. Like, I just think of a number of these songs that I just like. I like, yeah, the the B cuts, like Immaculate and Muscle. I could live without those. I think uh, the Kylie Minogue stuff is cool, but like, S Strange and Unusual, Consequences, Intimacy, Crave. Like a lot of those songs just stand out to me. It's really interesting stuff. Like, Twenty Minutes as like this kind of desperate almost like i just need to make love with this person for 20 minutes and i don't care about anything else is interesting to me it's like the way he the way ollie alexander presents it is interesting and i guess i didn't go into the history of this band a little bit because i thought this is the interesting thing too is that this album is a solo project in years and years was a band before this they were a group mm -hmm. and they've all left and now it's just ollie alexander doing this oh it's the, uh, the the m8 free effect I'm not as familiar with that, but I'll take your word for it. That's that's um, that's the group that did Midnight City. They were a band. Yeah, um, just became I'm, I'm one sure. guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I kind of like the Kevin Barnsey thing. I feel like this is a bit different though. Where, from what I gathered, Ollie was like one of the last people to join years and years. That so wasn't like super his, and then it became his. That that's interesting. It's like Kevin Barnes' birth of Montreal from the beginning. Yeah, but. I, I guess I thought that was kind of an interesting twist of like, hey, it's this band that's now a solo project, and it's like a gay album. I don't know. Like, he's worked with Pet Shop Boys. He's worked with uh, Kali Mail, as we've talked about. Like, he's getting out there, and he's doing stuff. And oh, 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 Elton John oh, he, was on this record. I'm just saying, all he needs is collaboration with Savage Garden, and he's done. <laughs> What'd you ask, Trix? Uh, Elton John was on this album. Was he? Yeah, on one of the last tracks uh, on the YouTube version, it said featuring Elton John. Oh, I didn't listen to the YouTube version. Maybe there's a different cut of it. Maybe. I didn't. See I'll uh, I'll pop a I'll pop a screenshot of that. Oh, it's you probably listened to like the New Year's <laughs> Eve edition. I probably did. It was like 23 songs long. Yeah, that's that's not the version. <laughs> Shit. The version I was I was initially talking about was 16 tracks, and then I realized that the streaming version 17 tracks because they re-released it. But the mm -hmm. 23 track version is like just a bunch of other stuff, like earlier songs, song that I think he did for the show It's a Sin, with which has Elton John on it. I see. So that's a Pet Shop Boys tune as well, I believe. Gotcha. That was the version I listened to. I am sorry. It's. I. I. I, I wish. I wish I uh, had some of that time in my life back, but uh, oh well. I guess I had to be very clear what I mean by deluxe edition from the get go now. <laughs> Uh, it's it's fine. It's also uh, I'm listening on the YouTube app and not YouTube Music, 
And so I just went, I just went with the one that had like the most tracks on it. Because they all just say last call. Night call? Night call, yeah. I also had never heard of Years and Years before this, so I was intrigued get, seeing how this album was like 88 on the Aria charts, number one on the UK albums charts. Like, it, there's, there's some recognition. But I, I, I... Is it just that you two just see gay albums and you're like, ah, oh, man. No, no, no not, not even that. It's just, this just isn't my style. And like, I'm I tried facetious. to listen to it and I just, I couldn't get into it. Like, I'm not trying to say you're homophobic. I'm getting of that. <laughs> I, I was just trying to do the I quickly became homophobic. <laughs> I, I feel like that's how we're just feeling about everything this week is like, yeah, I'm just not into this very much. Yeah, I'm just not into this. Very yeah. Much. Uh, it's just... And like, I would have, I would have been into something like uh, the moving stills, but like, it just, it's not a great version of what else there is. Yeah, that's fair. We're just hitting that point in the podcast where we've listened to a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are almost it's, it's, 100 it's, episodes in. <laughs> it, it's hurting us more than it's helping us, but it's helping us a lot. I, so. I don't know if I go that far. I think it's still helping us more than it's hurting us. Okay? Like, it's just, yeah, it's, 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 think, still, it's, it's still hurting us a non-zero amount, though, how much we've listened to. I think one of us needs to just pick 100 gigs and get it over with. <laughs> I, like, I like that 1,000 gex album so much. So do I. Hey, hey you the little piss baby. There's time. I, I think my favorite fun fact about that album is that uh, Conservopedia lists Money Machine as a song about the joys of capitalism. That's funny. I, I could not stop laughing when I saw that. Listen to the rest of the album? Yeah. No. Nah. No. Nah. Oh, Conser- Conservopedia thinks that uh, Born in the USA is a pro USA al- al- anthem. Born yeah. in the USA. USA. Um, you remember that episode of Top Gear where they were traveling across um, Vietnam and it was like if your car breaks down or your motorcycle breaks down, uh, so you have to drive the um, the backup one, which is this motorcycle that they they painted um, with the USA flags and had and had born in the USA constantly playing out of the speakers. Uh, I, I've seen the the one where they have to drive through the South and they've painted uh, pro gay marriage stuff all over their cars. It's fucking great. Yeah. If only, if only Jeremy Clarkson was. Yeah. So the only other thing really to talk about at this point is the, like because we're not going to really find common ground in this air. I think yeah. the Kylie Minogue tracks are great. I think yeah, I'll give you that. Part, they're the best part of the album, but that's not giving anything to you. I mean, A Second to Midnight is a single off of Kylie Minogue's album that is now here. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I guess yep. give your album the best yeah. you can get. But Yeah. I I don't know. I just think this is a really interesting album. I you know, I like, saw this album at Red Eye. Yeah. CD form. The, the whole deluxe and everything. And I was like, huh, do I pick this up? And the price was $37. And I was like, oh, that's $37. <laughs> More than I'd pay for it. That is uh, $35 more than I'd pay for it. Mm. But this is a- AUD as well, so it's a little cheaper US. But yeah. um, it's, So it'd be like $22 US. That is still $20 more than I'd pay for it. Yep. I don't know if I paid 10 bucks or 12 bucks for this album. I feel like 10 is good. 12 is, I guess, pushing it. I did buy this. I'd buy this if I saw it at a, in a, in a, like a thrift store bargain bin. That's yeah, well, I, yeah. I bought this first of the year because I was like, this is the last thing I listened to on my iPod. <laughs> this is the last. I thing am I so sorry to. for that iPod. I am so sorry for that iPod. <laughs> like the album. Let's finished. give it a proper burial next time. The album finished, and then it just took a dive. I I relate to that iPod. <laughs> yeah, uh, the true spirit animal of uh, this week is Domino's iPod. <laughs> there, there, uh, maybe that's I the title dedicated the favorite to least favorite of this um, I don't have a favorite or least favorite although I'd say no, actually I'd put my favorite style for the Kylie Minogue version tricks I, I like the Kylie Minogue stuff but the rest of this just eh favorites I think Consequences is great uh, he sounds a bit like Michael Jackson on that which I was surprised by that's um, not the type of person you want to sound like anymore no, but it, I mean, it's still. It's old Michael Jackson. It's okay. Yeah, though. it's it's just how he sounds. I don't know, but consequences I like. I do like Second to Midnight and the Starstruck version that Kylie Minogue did. 
Um, least favorite is probably Muscle and Immaculate. Fair enough. How do we rank this shit now? Um, uh, I got, uh, hold on, hold on. I got the easy way of doing it. Midweek, I abstain. <laughs> I get to be a pussy every once in a while. I have emotions, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I will actually do a 3 2 one though. My three is going to be Moving Stills. Number two is going to be Shovels and Rope. Number one is going to be Night Call. I'll go. Years and years, Moving Stills, shov- uh, Shovels and Rope. Damn, I got the number two. That's, I'm abstain. I'm fucking... You can abstain. I'm say change it. That's fine. You can abstain. That's fine. But. Call me abstinent. I already abstinent did. waves. <laughs> I already did the abstention for the last episode of last year. Oh, yeah. Album. I, I, I've forgotten to pick an album for next week, so you two pick first. Uh, I'll go first, because I know that Riss is going to hate me more, and I want to uh, get a reaction out of him. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing the album Great Barrier Reefer by Bong Ripper. Uh, it's not fucking country. It's a, an hour and 20 long, hour, hour and 20 minute long song that's doom yeah. metal. Yeah, but it's called the Great Barrier Reef. You already sold me. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my favorite of the long songs. We'll, uh, we'll get into that when we cover it next week. Damn, okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're in my time. And I'm super excited for this week. Let me tell you. The new Lucas Skookas project is out. That's yep. right. Free feeder. Will you please be, will you please be quiet, please, EP? It's out on Friday. I am picking it. I'm also going to pick a second EP because I want to make sure we have enough to talk about. Uh, we're going to do the uh, album that Ethan Raider of Cardinal Heart and Grief Eater put out more recently called uh, We Don't Talk EP <laughs> by the band Sorner. All right. Oh, S-O-R-N-E-R. S-O-R-N-E-R. That's... And in some ways, gotcha. I think this EP is uh, Cardinal Heart 2. All right. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, you'll, like you'll, in a good way or a bad way? You will recognize some of the samples. All right. And I have, um, I have no idea what the fuck I am going guess. to pick the next week. Nah, that's too, too obvious. But 2,000 I, gex, man. Nah, nah, nah. Let's just throw it on as a fourth nah. album. Fuck it. Nah, 1,000 gex can go later down the line. Instead, uh, I, I think... I think I might pick something that's come out recently for, uh, for an artist that I saw recently, actually. And uh, it might come as a, a little bit of surprise. It has been talked about before on this podcast, but uh, not, not, as a, not as a chosen record. So that does knock out Psychedelic Point Crumpets, sorry. Mm. Instead, I'm just going to say fuck it to everyone and we're going to do the Wiggles Free Wriggled album. Fuck yes! 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 <laughs> I like this album already, and I've only heard the EP version of it. This is it had to be it had to be chosen one day. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is their fucking version of Pub Feed. I sent that to my father. The, their version of Pub Feed. Yeah, they they played I, that. They played that live. I, I I sent I sent it to my father. And I'm like, Dad, you've got to listen to this. This is the Wiggles covering a fucking punk song that came out the other year. It is better than it has any right to be. Uh, I somehow was actually yeah one of the one of the better things on there, but um yeah I, I will I will say before we um before we do listen uh throughout the week of it, it, it it's a mixture of good and bad. Fair enough, I figured as much. But, Gotta be great regardless. But hell yeah, that means we've got Bong Ripper, the Great Barrier Reefer, the album title, the Wiggles and the Wiggles. She wiggled. Grief Eaters, will you please be quiet, please, EP, as well as Sorners, we don't talk, EP. All right. And that's uh, going to do it for listening this week on Dissonant Waves. We do have one more topic I'd like to, sh- I'd like to talk about. Ah, uh, yes, your, uh, yeah. your episode idea. We're going to do another contest or, like, collaborative project of sorts. Uh, we're yes. We're going to do a songwriting contest in <laughs> which we all write songs over, I don't know what we want to do, like a month, maybe episode 100. A month, month and a half, uh, basically. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say an episode 100 for sure kind of thing, because I think we do have plans for that, but there, there might be some minutes brought up on it. 
yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna try to finish this somewhere around the end, near episode 100, if not exactly on it, where we all just write yes. songs and then kind of pick our best ones and just share them with each other, see who can write songs the best or has the most interesting style with it. And this is meant to be yeah. like loosey goosey, just kind of like let's just do what makes us happy. I'm not I'm asking for like production here. I'm not asking for you know, you can collaborate, but I'm I'm just looking for lyrics, looking for. I, I'm, I might throw some stuff down with the ukulele. Sure. And, like, that's the thing, too, is, like, I want to make sure that we are also communicating what the vision is for each song of, like, hey, this is meant to be this genre or this style or this speed, if you have that in mind. If you don't, that's fine. But All right. If you're, if you're imagining, like, a certain way you want it done that makes it make sense, definitely share that. All do, right. Fair enough. Sounds do, good. Do you agree to these terms? Uh, yeah. I, I, I do agree. Cool. Well, let's all get uh, writing music and listening to new music. Hell yeah. That's going to do it for Dissonant Waves this week. Anyone have any final comments? Any final words? Uh, yeah, uh, I, have, I have some final words. I have been riddling. You can catch me on my website. I've been looking for kids on GitHub.io. I also have a YouTube channel that's in the description below. I'm Dominic uh, on Twitter at D-A-C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I. I have it writing out there. You can find me if you Google me, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm Trix. I've been interrupting Trix for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go uh, ahead. Uh, I'm Trix. I'd like to just kind of apologize if I seemed like extra fiery today. I spent most of the day in the fetal position dealing with period cramps, and uh, I overcame and recorded the episode, thankfully. But uh, yeah, you can catch me on Twitter at Procrastinaut underscore. That's like procrastinating astronaut with an underscore at the end of it. And I also have a bunch of other shit in the description. Catch us all at <clears throat> Distant Waves on Twitter and Distant Waves at Space. Want to say goodbye, Trix, since you're kind of in the charge? Yeah, uh, fuck it, yeah. And uh, that'll be everything. Uh, we'll see y'all sometime next week on episode 95. Bye. Bye. Wiggles and Bong Ripper, fuck. Oh, it's... Have, you, have you seen the track list that'll be ripped up?